Hey everyone, welcome to Gamma TV. I'm Moen, and who the hell are you people? I'm Charlotte. Mm. And I'm Kira. Dan's not here this week. He was abducted by a clan of midget South African transvestites. That's a new one. So I'm here to take his place. Hi, Kara. Hi. We got about half the views on our last episode than we did on our first. So apparently, people weren't coming. Our quality is going down. People weren't coming back for that second helping. Maybe now that we've got two girls, maybe that'll increase the. Uh... It it's gonna work. You know, we're just gorgeous. Let's, let's start with some. Let's start with some comic book news. Can we do our little drama? No, because I edit it in every week now. Oh, look. <laughs> You've upset Groot. Poor Groot. Groot loves me. <laughs> See, he's not. What I want to know, like, he comes with an accessory. It's the Awesome Mix Volume Two cassette. Uh, it's a cassette, and like the stickers obviously faded for uh, authenticity. Uh, I want to know if you put this into a into a tape player, will it play? And if it does, do we have a tape player? Just a. We have a toy, a toy tape player. I don't True. think that'll work. <laughs> what have we got this week, Kira? Well, the first one I'm going to grab out is. The Hungry Ghosts. Only because it's, I actually quite liked one of the mini stories in here. Is it kind of like the Very Hungry Caterpillar? You win. Perfect. No, it's... Imagine a skeleton chasing after you and trying to eat you. Or maybe the whole pirates and sirens thing. Instead of it being a mermaid that seduces you and drowns you. Well, she does something else. Yeah. You'll have to read it to find out. But it's well, that's, that's a yeah, bit of a it, teaser. It's kind it's of interesting. Of a, it's so a bit I, of a carrot for you. <laughs> I thought that Actually, it was... Actually, I want to know So it's, it's, a, it's a collection of short stories, is it? There's about three um, in here. And who's it written by? It is written by Anthony Bourdain. Actually, no. So I thought that it was. But then when you read it on the back, he got sent a manuscript for this comic from someone. Apparently, he publishes books. Oh. Anthony Bourdain. Mm -hmm. He he publishes books so I, and he got sent the manuscript for this comic from someone completely unrelated. Just, and for, just, just yeah. for context, uh, Bourdain is is a chef. He is a celebrity chef. Like right. yeah, he like does cooking shows and stuff like that. Does he yell at people that don't cook very well? I, does he go he, to people's he's restaurants? Not, he's not quite like what's his name? Gordon Ramsay. Yeah yeah, he's not as bad as Gordon Ramsay. He's like the French version, I suppose, which, you know, is so all fake politeness and snobbiness. I would say, I don't think the French are known for their fake politeness. And snobbiness? I Disclaimer, I don't know anyone French personally, so... If you're a French like person, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, and, and tell us, were you offended by that? Are you a snob? Do you have fake politeness? You said there are about three short stories? Yeah. So One, one's about uh, being chased by skeletons. Um, so you've got Kaidan, which I haven't quite worked out where the heck it came from. It just sort of appears and creates havoc. So they're fear stories, they're mini fear stories. Okay. Um, it, the first two stories are actually written by the same person, and the starving skeleton is the second one. And that is pretty much this giant skeleton just coming around saying, I'm hungry, I'm going to eat you, as chefs do. They're hungry and, well, they eat things. And then the pirates... It's a bit of a moral story, the skeleton. They say one. skeletons. How do they get hungry? They don't have stomachs or esophaguses. No, well, it's it's a moral or story to because taste. what it is, it's like this this homeless or muscles man. to be nourished. <laughs> no, but this homeless man goes to a restaurant, like you know, it's after closing time, and he's like, "I'm hungry. Do you have any scraps?" That you and can the chef give is me? like, "And the chef's like, no, yeah, exactly." He's like, "No, no, no, no. You you know, starve to death. Go away." And then he turns into the skeleton thing and goes chasing after the chef and he's like, yeah, see, you should have fed me. Does he turn into a skeleton and, because and he's he, magic or because he's so hungry that he just like disintegrates? I, I think that he was meant to be magic, but it was a little unclear in that. Okay. And the last one Maybe is about pirates and it's about... The pirates. Uh, yeah. A mermaid that seduces men on ships or specifically pirates? Um, she's jumped on to this ship yep. and pretty much tries to seduce our captain and without spoiling it too much then decides to enjoy the rest of the crew. Okay, and she's a redhead. She, 
She she's, a, a she's a well stacked redhead. Well shaped. And has a bit of a comedian side as well, which any girl will have a good laugh at in this comic. Yeah, there's a couple of like golden lines in there. So instead of being a mermaid, she's more of a lobster creature in the end when she actually goes into the water. A mer lobster. Or a lobster maid. Well, yeah. I don't know, I think a lobster maid could be pretty sexy. You know, Itched their own. The torso of a woman. The uh, lobster tail of a lobster. <laughs> That's like that joke about the mermaid, like what end do you want to be the fish half? Yeah. See? <laughs> and if you have a lobster maid and you want to eat her out, you have to add some butter first. Have so what else, what else are we looking at this week? Well, I will pass this one on to you, as I think this one needs no introduction. But we will introduce it. I'm going to say, I'm just standing here... <laughs> <laughs> I was about to introduce it, but after saying that, I'm just going to stand here awkwardly and say, <laughs> hmm... Okay, so it's Black Panther. Now, this is a, a free comic. You can come into Impact Comics right now and pick up this for free. Both. Both? Past and present stories? Yes. Okay. So it's a collection of excerpts. Thanks, that was the comic god, who who uh, we have a, a small shrine in the store, so he inhabits the uh, the back of Impact Comics. Yeah, so if you want to meet the comic god, come down here to Impact Comics because this is where he lives. Yes. Yeah. Make him an offering of and, coffee and, and donuts. And if you have any queries about any other comics here, just shout them at the top of your lungs, and he'll answer you. Yeah. So it's Black Panther. <coughs> uh, it's excerpts of uh, current and past Black Panther comics. Basically, it, it's a bit of a hype. It's a bit of a, a hype man for the upcoming Black Panther movie. If you are excited or, or at least mildly interested in the upcoming Black Panther movie, you can come in and get this for free uh, and check out what he's about. You know, some of his past stories, some of his, his current stories. Uh, he actually is married to Storm from X-Men. Um, I think, she, I know Storm's in this comic, I don't know in what context, but yeah. Um, so if you want something for free and you want to know about Black Panther, head into Impact Comics now. <laughs> okay, next it's the Big event for this week. Uh, we have Milk Wars. Got milk? Do you have milk? Sorry, I'll go home. <laughs> Got milk. So it's pretty cool, this little container. Yeah, like you, the you might have. Milk carton. It's you might have come into your local comic store over the past few weeks and seen uh, milk cartons spread about. Uh, it's been basically hyping up. Uh, this big event that's, that's happening in the Young Animal imprint, which is a, a, a DC imprint. Um, basically Young Animal, what they do is uh, they take DC properties uh, that haven't sort of been utilised for a while or, you know, classic characters and, and try and bring them out and revitalise them for sort of the current age. Oh, so, and um, weren't they written by the singer from My Chemical Romance? I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yes. They were written by? What, all of them or just Doom Patrol? Uh, uh, all of them are uh, co-written. <clears throat> God. Yeah, basically, uh, Doom Patrol, for any sort of older comic fans that remember Doom Patrol, um, they've been sort of re-established in the Young Animal imprint, uh, and they have had an ongoing story about uh, a company called Retcon, who, uh, basically, it's, it's confusing. You, you want to go and pick up sort of some back issues here. Um, they work in buying and selling different realities, um, doing a lot of interdimensional stuff, uh, and basically, they have uh, influenced Earth Prime uh, with milk uh, through a very complicated set of events that uh, pertain to a living street, uh, a girl from a comic book, an ambulance, actually giving birth to um, basically what is a Superman clone called Milkman Man. But is it an ambulance or a street? I think it's a, he's Danny, Danny the Living Street, but she does refer to him as a cross dressing ambulance. Um, to Either be, way, to be perfectly sense. honest, I'm not, not quite up to date with my Danny the Living Street lore, so uh, we'll have to get back to you on that one, but... If uh, you know the answer, add it in the comments. Yep, yeah, so they, they spawn uh, Milkman Man, who, using the milk from sort of interdimensional horror beasts, uh, influences uh, members of the Justice League. They, like, sit there and milk from them, or... Like... You don't see a milk, but you, you see the milk. But you don't actually see these things being But, but that stuff. means that he actually sits there with these monsters and like just... I like to think so. Yep. I think there might be a, hopefully a supplementary maybe, issue. Maybe one of our future issues will be 
about him. Or maybe there. maybe I'll do some fan art tonight. Maybe I'll, I'll do some. Yeah, totally. Some... I'll do some fan art and we'll add it into the video. Yep, yep. Yeah. All right. I'll draw pictures of uh, Superman milking horror creatures to get their delicious, yep. nutrient-rich milk. Oh, uh, and by the way, it's written by Gerard Way, who is from My Chemical Romance. Cool. Um, Thank you, Google. Yeah, so he, he, he force fed milk to the Justice League to basically influence them and create this weird sort of reality that he, they're trying to off-sell to, uh, to someone. All right, so that's Milk Wars, on. that's Milk Wars. What else have we got today? We have a local honourable mention. Um, oh, I read this. I should, probably should have actually paid attention to who. Yeah, Eternal. So... Uh, it was... Okay, so it was illustrated by Eric... Zawadzki. It was illustrated by Eric Zawadzki. Uh, I got that down, Pat. If it's not right, don't correct me. That makes me sound. It was weird. written. It was written by our friend Ryan K. Lindsay, who is a longtime Gamacon collaborator. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, and a delicious palette. Delicious palette by colorist D. No, D. Kniff. 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 By the create uh Canalingus. Yes, by colorist D Canalingus. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And you started it. <laughs> trying to have a serious I trying to have a serious conversation about comics and you just won't stop bringing vaginas into it. Jeez. Do you want me to take my vagina out of it then? Take your vagina, put it over by the door, and you can have it at the end of the show. <gasps> um, it's very beautiful. It's about Vikings. Uh, you know, uh, Shield Maidens, a, a tribe of Shield Maidens. Uh, an evil spirit. Led by Biff. Yep. Very cool. Like, the art is amazing. Like, I was impressed. Like, we sat here and read a whole bunch of comics by, like, DC and, and Marvel, all the, you know, the big names, and then we read this and we was like, wow, this is the, the prettiest looking one. Yeah, of it the is bunch. really gorgeous illustrations, but that's kind of, um, like, when you read the description in the back, the little author's note in that, they talk about how it was originally just this little short story, but they passed on to their friend who, the, who was the illustrator. And they just kind of went, got taken away by, you know, creating all of these beautiful illustrations for it until it became triple the size. <laughs> I'm not going to show and you the art. Book. You have to come in and buy it. It's well worth it. Yeah, yeah. And some very strong, powerful women in it as well. So, very much like beautiful art by a local artist. Cool. I guess that's comic news for this week. Yay! Yay. We went and did our one minute shop this week. Yay, one minute shop! Okay, who wants to go first with one minute shop? Basically, the idea is we give ourselves one minute to search through Impact Comics and pick what item we would pick should we be blessed with the ability to have one thing for free, so... So if Mao, like, had a brain aneurysm. Yeah. 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 Every day we come and check, has, has, has uh, Mao had a brain aneurysm this week? No? Alright, we'll try again next week. One of these days. It's worthwhile checking, you never know. You never know. It's, it's, a, well, it's a well established uh, comic book shop rule that uh, brain aneurysms equals free merchandise. So just put that in your back pocket for, for later. Anyway. We'll give them coffee. Kira, what was your one minute shop? I have the Direwolf, but mine's a little bit because it's cute, it's soft, it's fuzzy. So it's, it's the Game of Thrones Direwolf? Yes. Is it one of them specifically? Uh, no, it just says it's one of their cups. It's one of the pups. So, um, it does state on here, Game of Thrones, you win or you die, which we all know a lot of people die. So, this cute little guy is for $39.99, and he's soft, and he's fuzzy, and you should take him home with you, because he's cute. I want him. I want him. <laughs> Mike, you got your thing. Alright. Which was... Why, why did you guys put your things on opposite sides of where you're standing? <laughs> Woo! Alright. Yes, Charlotte, what do you have this week? I have the Linkin Park Special Edition Transformer. And it's like, got a stereo micro cassette recorder thing in it. It's really cool. Like, it's Linkin Park Edition, guys. Okay. Come on. How so funky is, is that? Is that Soundwave or is it Blaster? Yeah, so it's, it's Soundwave. Soundwave. It's Soundwave. AKA Sound Blaster. So how many made were there? Yeah, so they only made 2,000 of them. So it's very limited? So it, it's a limited edition Was one. it made to commemorate anything? Yeah, so Linkin Park is doing the soundtrack for the Transformers. Of course they do. So yeah. that's kind of, you know, and, and they're kind of well known for doing novelty items, like, you know, doing little collection, 
collective pieces and yeah so obviously it was just you know something else that they were like hey let's do some Transformers merch. Do you know when it was released? I'm assuming it was released uh, pre-Chester. 2012. So yeah, very much so. so yeah, very pre-Chester. So obviously if you're a big fan of Lincoln Park and you know you had a bit of a rough year last year, uh, it's the perfect item to sort of commemorate. So that was my pick for $180, which I actually think is kind of a bargain for that it's because pretty that's good. pretty yeah. freaking cool. Yeah, and you know, more than likely there the won't just won't be new Mer uh, Lincoln Park merchandise from now. So yeah, yeah. limited edition. Yeah, price. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Right, cool. So that what, was about my, you? what was yours? All right, my one minute shop is this. Uh, I was a child of the 80s, so uh, movies like Dark Crystal and Labyrinth were part of my recommended childhood viewing. Uh, and this is the worm from Labyrinth. Uh, it's so funny. Yeah. I, I, there seems to be a bit of a resurgence uh, with Labyrinth these days. I, I don't know. I if think probably because of David Bowie's death. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a bit of that. Like I think there's a sort of like a nostalgia. A nostalgia there. of it. I think I know there's a lot of a lot of people younger than me that maybe never really saw it, but they still seem to connect with it. Uh, well, anyway, I'm younger than you, and I watched it. Yeah, but you're not that much younger than me. I'm younger than both of you, and I watched I'm, I'm it. Sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I'm so, sorry. Uh, Jennifer Connolly, when she first gets stuck in the labyrinth, she runs into the little worm puppet, and it's very cute. Uh, and yeah, there's a plush toy of it now. So uh, I just thought it, it is really. Adorable. It took me back to my childhood when I saw this, and I was just like, "Yep, that's cool." Um, he's probably not one of the better known characters. Like everyone just remembers, you know, the Goblin King, and uh, I remember him. Yeah, he's memorable. He's not in it for very much, but he's memorable. So. I think he's very cute. I think he's very recognizable. He's not actually cute, he's actually kind of disturbing, but... I love his big bulgy eyes. Yeah. But that might say more about me than... And he's hairy. Eyes. He's furry. If you like long furry objects... With a kink. If you like... If, if this... If this does anything for you... Uh, the Worm is $60. $59.99. But it's the first time I've ever seen this plushie and there's only one here as far as I can see, so... Mm. Especially if you're a fan of the Labyrinth. If you're a, an 80s kid uh, and you had your first uh, crush on Jennifer Connelly and that has some relevance to yeah. buying a world. I'm sorry, you had your first crush on the Goblin King. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. that hair. I that didn't. Voice. His massive testicles. We actually all hung out on Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, if you had tuned into our GammaCon live stream, uh, we were playing some games on PlayStation 4 this week. Uh, the first one, Final Fantasy Dissidia. What did you think? <laughs> well, I was button mashing and I won. So, yeah. Cool. Can you? It was good. Can you explain what the game seems was, to be about? Was, okay. So it was. There was a lot going on on the screen. <laughs> there there was, was a lot. It was. It was really busy. It was like an old school kind of arcade game kind of thing. So, yeah. But as someone who hadn't played any of the other Final Fantasies before, I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Oh, it's it's no idea. That's why I was just it's button mashing. Nothing but like, it's nothing like any of the Final Fantasy games. Uh, it is an arcade type game. Um, you can play as the main protagonist of any of the Final Fantasy games. We uh, played as Shima. That was who we summoned. That was Shiva. Oh. That was Shiva. Um, so yeah, the protagonist uh, of all the mainline games. Plus, I think there was a character from. The online 14, and there was one of the characters from Final Fantasy Tactics. Also, uh, the villain from all those games. So, so basically, yeah, you choose a team of three characters, and you can choose villains and 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 uh, heroes, and you get put in an arena with a team of three other characters, uh, and you control one, and you run around, mashing buttons to do spells and sword attacks and and summonings. And then eventually a summon came, but I don't know why. Um, well, you we had a lot of issues with the tutorial when we first started. We yeah, we, we got like stuck in the tutorial. <laughs> um, so, in the end, we winged it, like any other good gamer does, and decided, hey, let's just go in and button mash and let's just see how we go. The only positive, other than the fact that there was no book, I missed books in games and we oh, knew yeah, what yeah. to do. Yeah. You, went, you went and checked, didn't you? Yeah, I did. And you were so disappointed when you opened it up and there was nothing in there. I was meant to be in there, but <laughs> yeah. Um, the other good point about this game as well is it is beautifully animated. The, all the video scenes that you do see yeah, are Yeah, it, it is really pretty. Yeah. A really pretty game. So, if you're a Final Fantasy fan, 
it, it's sort of like fan heaven. Yeah. Um, one thing is that, you know, obviously you have characters like Lightning, um, who in, in a PS3 game uh, was, you know, rendered as a, as a modern day character. But some of the older characters, like, uh, I like Final Fantasy VI, so Terra is like the hero from that game. Uh, and I always just saw her as like either the uh, Amano art or the, uh, the little sprite. But she's been like, you know, fully modeled in a, a, a you know, PS4 quality uh, 3D model, and she looks really cool. And same with some of the other um, characters from like older games. So you're like, wow, like look how cool it looks. And um, same when you summon as well. Your character that you have summoned sort of has a, a moment. So we had Shiva. We, had, we unlocked Shiva somehow. And yeah, that was just the one that came out of the little crystal that we selected. And her sort of animation was a little blue crystal ball sort of slid across her shoulders, down her arms. And it was really good and really smooth. Yeah, and I think when you, you unlock you unlock cutscenes that like tell the story. I think that's I think the so. that when you play story mode, it's not actually a sort of story mode. Basically, as you complete other tasks, you get items that unlock the story mode. I think that's how it worked. But um, I know, uh, like you know, obviously there are main characters from different Final Fantasy games interacting with each other. Uh, so I know right at the beginning, I think were we playing as Terra, no, or I think we were playing as Noctis from uh, Fifteen. And um, yeah, he, he meets up with Lightning. So like, yeah. it's, it's kind of like a fanfic of people just talking about like how all the Final Fantasy characters come together and they all fight bad guys. Uh, so yeah, if you like Final Fantasy and, and you like that kind of thing, seeing characters from different series all interact, then yeah, it, 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 it'll satisfy that sort of like fan part of, of you. Admittedly, I was drunk while playing. Like, there's some depth in the gameplay, like you obviously have ranged characters and, and support mm -hmm. characters and frontline fighters and you make your balance party and, you know, you play the way, it, it looks like it's fun. Yeah. Um, if you're a Final Fantasy fan, then like, you've probably already bought it because it's like just that much fan service. Um, if you're not really set into that few things, I think it'd still be fun, but maybe not super, super fun. I, I think there's better games out there. Yeah. So, well, there's, there's other games I would pick. Yeah, I, get it, I give it about maybe a 7 if you're not really into Final Fantasy that much. And maybe probably a nine if you are, because it's it's yeah. just Final Fantasy yeah. fan service. Cool. Another game from that night that I did enjoy, but I think that's because my button smashing actually won a few rounds. Was the Dragon Ball Z game? Dragon Ball played. Fighter Z. Yeah, the Fighter Z games. Um, yeah, the that only was great. Problem with that was fifteen minutes of video, <laughs> five minutes of fight. Yeah, we started yeah, playing yeah. the story mode, um, and I think it might have been set on easy. Because uh, the plot was a bit weird to start with. It was mm. like, you know, a soul has inhabited Dragon Ball Z characters and the soul represents you. So there's a little bit of fourth wall breaking where it's like, oh, yeah. someone strange is in Goku now. Oh, it's the player. Like, can you help us save the world, player? And, um, and it went on for ages. Like, different characters would turn up and they'd talk and talk. Mm. And, and then finally we got to a fight. And it, we got a perfect just, like, just by doing nothing. Like, not mashing buttons, not playing yeah. professionally. We just, like... Just trying things out, and we won the round perfectly. It lasted all about 20 seconds. Like, you follow the prompts, and it's like, oh, yay, completed! And oh, then, and then yeah, it, it went for yeah, another about yeah. 10 minutes of, of it video. It was kind of a letdown. Yeah. yeah, so, like, I'm sure it picks up, uh, and I'm sure, like, you get involved in the story, and mm. maybe the fights get a bit harder, and you, you need a bit more skill, but... Uh, the, the bit we played was... Yeah, when we went out of story mode. Yeah. Yeah, because there was... Um, you could play it online against other people, or as what we did, we were local. playing local, yeah. and just decided to beat each other up. Yeah, local... It was great. It was... It local reminded me player, of Mortal like, Kombat. We did uh, mm. some sort of tournament things, where we sort of did like 2v2, and then we switched over, and... Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's a tag-based one, so you, yeah, you pick your three characters, and you've got like basically three life bars. Uh, you can you swap characters in and out. Yeah, you're uh, only playing one character at a time. Yeah, but once that character's sort of gone, then that, that character's eliminated and you've only got your two characters left. Except I worked out by button, button mashing again that how to swap between my characters. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm still not sure what button did it. I just, so, it was yeah. one of the R ones. Yeah. Like, and it's a flashy game. Like, the graphical style is kind of a cell shaded kind of look, and, and yeah. it did mm. literally look like you were playing an episode of Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It did. yeah. Like it looked good. Like um, it was very cartoony. And it was it was simple, but yet I, I I could see that there was depth in it. Like obviously you got you were bashing buttons. <laughs> uh, but I was having fun. That's I wasn't bashing buttons. I, I I don't know fighting games that well, so it was more of a you know a 
a, a, a very unskilled person trying to play the game properly. But I started to get Look, to my, know, my fighting style works for me, okay? Yeah. Like that's how I grew up playing yeah. Mortal Kombat and yeah. yeah. So you had and that's how like this was very reminiscent of Mortal yeah. Kombat. You've got the arena and you've got your two characters, you know. So you know, there's me and a couple of people who are like trying to sort of like work out how to play. A couple of people that are just mashing buttons, but we created a cure method. <laughs> it all <laughs> It all kind of worked. Like we had a good time, and like the battles, yeah, it was, it, it was the battles got fierce and like okay. close. And if if you were like you know fighting game fanatics, like I can see that there is enough depth there. Mm. That it's it's not just a, a pick up and play like stupid game for no for for the noobs. It's not a noob game. If you're into fighting but games, I think like, it's a noob game. It is. Well. It's a noob yeah, game. Yeah, definitely. And, but, and definitely, it's a great yeah. party game as well. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. we were having a blast. Did you see any good movies lately, girls? Yeah, I actually did. we did. We, last night we went and watched Eureka 7, um, High Evolution, the first installment in the series of movies that they're doing. So, <laughs> yeah, when we went to this, okay, so I read the description on the Dandy page and it said that it was supposed to be like a retelling. So, so to clarify, you, you didn't watch Eureka 7? No, I've never watched the original series. Um, so, but when I read that it was supposed to be a retelling, I thought, oh, you know, it shouldn't matter, you know. I, yeah, you, you understand yeah. it, you'll get I'll, into I'll, it. Yeah, or at least understand what's going on in the movie if I don't understand references back to the original. Did you understand movie? the movie? Totally no, <laughs> not at all. I was dead wrong. She if, walked out of it so confused. I, I sat there the entire movie with just thoughts running through my head like, what the fuck is going on? Well, I, I am so confused right now. Okay, okay. so... Did you fare any better? Um, a little bit, but I had watched a couple of episodes a few years back when it was on Adult Swim. And, but she was still confused. Yeah, mostly because one minute you're here in your timeline, and then you're here, and then you're here, and then you're here, and then you're here, and then you're here. And I'm like... Yeah, it doesn't go chronologically. What? It jumps all over the place. Like, one minute, it's like... You know, 13 days in the future, then like 7 days in the past, then like it jumps all over the place. So mm. it takes you a little bit to work out what he's trying to say. The bonus is they do repeat a couple of scenes and you go, ah, oh, that makes yeah, a little bit more a little sense bit now. More, a little bit more sense. I, I, I guess like he got adopted and then he turned to go into goo and then they had to get rid of him. She didn't. Turned, well, okay, yeah, she turned into goo because of him, but she's an alien. No, it, she's like an android him. or something. She's not human. I know that, like, because she kept him going on. I'm not human. I'm a monster. Like, that's literally all she was saying the entire movie. She was a poor girl that kept getting left alone by the two most important people that ever entered her life. One of them turned her into goo. I I would be quite happy to see that person gone from my life. Um, so are you, are you saying if people are interested in maybe seeing the movies, maybe go and watch? Yeah, don't don't see old... it if you haven't watched the original. Like, yeah, I wonder if you're. I actually or... don't recommend watching it at all if you haven't yeah. seen the original. I get yeah. an idea of at least who your characters are. Yeah. So I came into it a little bit more knowledgeable than Charlotte, and I came out of it a little bit better. But even but you were still was, really confused. That was yeah, yeah yeah. I needed more. The the soundtrack was amazing, and there was a scene oh, in the beginning, yeah. this war scene, where there's like. I still don't quite understand what was going on. It was like a nuclear warhead that like played music throughout the Earth or something. Yeah, it was it was a doomsday device, but through the musical yeah. rhythms of the Earth, it was yeah. used to destroy. But the music was cool. It was. And they, they were referring to it as, oh, the festival will be starting soon, which I thought was a pretty cool way to describe basically nuclear catastrophe. Yeah. All right, I want to just take a quick opportunity to talk about uh, the Cloverfield Paradox. Uh, so this was... The hinted at third movie in the uh, Cloverfield franchise uh, that apparently they were working on, and then during the Super Bowl, they did a trailer that said oh. it's going to be on Netflix after the Super Bowl finishes, and go watch it on Netflix. See, I, I don't watch the Super Bowl, Bowl so I no. wouldn't know. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Philadelphia, yay! <laughs> Beat those Patriots. Uh, anyway. Um, so I, want, I have a bone to pick with the Cloverfield franchise. Um, oh, franchise. Uh, so I, I'm a big kaiju monster movie fan. Um, I grew up watching like Godzilla and Gamera and those sort of things. So I I liked Cloverfield. Um, it wasn't the best movie. It made Zach all wearing pants. I hope not. I don't know. Yeah. Continue. Um, okay. Um, what was I? Yeah. Bone to pick. Yeah. So I liked Cloverfield. Uh, I don't like it that it was the, the, the first person camera view. 
But the concept, like, the beginning part at least was like, wow, it's like a first person, what would happen if Godzilla actually attacked the city? Um, so I like Cloverfield well enough. Uh, and I was excited because they did like sort of viral marketing beforehand. One of those, uh, and, you know, and there were little hints and references that people were trying to work out about how, you know, little bits in the background and references to uh, products and websites that were affiliated beforehand and the information. Um, so they did a second movie, a second movie, which was called 10 Cloverfield Lane, which was actually a movie, a, a script completely yeah. unrelated yeah. to Cloverfield. Uh, it just happened to be produced by Bad Robot, which is J.J. Abrams' uh, company. Uh, and they just decided to slap the name Cloverfield on it. Uh, and they added the barest of references. Um, it was a great movie, don't get me wrong. But if you like watching giant monsters attack cities, and you thought that you were going to get it. Uh, and then so, uh, the Cloverfield Paradox. The exact same thing. It's a script completely unrelated. Um, the movie was pretty shitty. And the added bonus that they just added the name and added the vaguest of references to the monster. Uh, so I wasn't happy. Um, you know, at least Cloverfield Lane was a good movie. This was a shit movie. Uh, and it made me angry. Moen's angry chart from 0 to 10 has got me about a 9. Woo. Yeah. So I was close to hulking out. And you gotta be careful when Moen hulks out, because I might cry a little in the corner. <laughs> Did you, either of you watch the uh, solo trailer? Yes. Yes. No. no. <laughs> Alright. Well, I haven't been. Okay, you, you can just go out of frame now. <laughs> I you, you can just go out of frame. On social media. So, hero. <laughs> What did you think of the solo trailer? It is interesting. It, it looks like it's going to be that comical relief that we need it to be. Oh, um, I don't know about that. It might be comical, but I, I, I disagree that we there, need it. There's a line in there that says, I want to be a pilot. So does everybody else. And of course, everybody wants to be a pilot. Heck, even here, everybody wants to be a pilot. We saw Top Gun. So, before any of these trailers, my expectation for the solo movie uh, it was so low, it was practically in the molten mantle of the Earth. Mm -hmm. um, I saw the pre-trailer trailer. A little teaser. The little teaser thing. Yeah. And I went, oh, alright, alright. My, my expectations are raised that maybe if you dug on my expectations, you might find a fossil or two. Yeah. And then I saw the full trailer and I went, nah, this looks like shit. But I think it's either going to go one or two ways. Uh, Solo is either going to go in a way that it was too rushed, it did not give the fans what they want from a Solo movie. I don't know. To, to my mind, what fans want is not a Solo movie. Just like, <laughs> just leave it alone. Like, you, we don't but need it. Died. It's not. No. We've got to mourn it, I think. Spoiler! Okay. Moen's psychic prediction of 2018 Solo is going to be trash. That's a lock. And I'm going to put a little Moen's lock of 2018. Click. We Solo be. is going to be trash. So I think that's Gamma TV for this week. Uh, thank you, Kira, for, for stepping in at, at short notice. Um, maybe maybe uh, Dan will still be uh, indisposed. Who knows? He might turn blonde. I think he's he's on a pilgrimage. Right here. Dan is uh, on his pilgrimage <laughs> to Southeast Asia to uh, get in touch with his inner goddess. Ah. Uh, he might be still away next week, so maybe maybe you can come back. Charlotte, you going to watch some stuff this week? Yes, I will. You're gonna, you're, you're, gonna watch, you're gonna watch a little altered carbon. Hey, look, maybe? I did my homework on the comics. This a little week. bit, a, a little bit of altered carbon. Yeah, yeah, I will. Look forward to altered carbon. I'll watch carbon another five minutes. We'll see you all next week. All right. Bye. Bye.